More than 2,000 years ago, the Greek philosopher Democritus stated that matter could not be divided into smaller and smaller pieces forever. Eventually, the smallest piece of matter could be obtained. This idea was largely forgotten until the early 1800s. That's when English chemist John Dalton began observing the activities of weather by studying gases. Through his experiments and observations, Dalton developed the basic ideas of the atomic theory. Dalton concluded that pure substances called elements are made of extremely small particles called atoms. He stated that atoms of the same element are exactly alike and the atoms of different elements are different from one another. Dalton also stated that atoms could not be changed into different types of atoms by chemical reactions. He also theorized that compounds are formed by joining the atoms of two or more elements. These ideas served as the basis for what is known as the atomic theory. Late in the 19th century, in 1897, another scientist by the name of J.J. Thompson hypothesized that atoms are made up of even smaller particles. Thompson conducted experiments in which an electric current was passed through tubes pumped almost empty of air. You observe. What do you see when the electric current passes through the tube? You can see that light is given off. This light is created by rays traveling through the tube. Thompson observed that when a magnetic charge is introduced, the rays are deflected. Thompson reasoned that the rays were made up of negatively charged particles. Today, we call these negatively charged particles found in atoms electrons. Thompson also hypothesized that positively charged material existed in the atom. In his model of the atom, he proposed that an atom was made of a positively charged material in which negatively charged electrons were scattered. His model of the atom became known as the plum pudding model. He envisioned small electrons embedded in the atom, much like raisins embedded in a plum pudding. And about the same time, Henry Becquerel, Pierre Curie, and Marie Curie were learning fascinating things about the way certain elements emit energy in a process called radiation. In 1911, building upon the previous work of other scientists, Ernest Rutherford, a British scientist, developed a revised theory of the atom. In one famous experiment, he fired a stream of positively charged particles at a thin sheet of gold foil. He observed that most of the positively charged particles passed right through the gold foil. He concluded that the particles in the gold foil contained a great deal of empty space, contradicting Thompson's ideas of a solid atom. And while most of the positively charged particles passed through the foil, some bounced directly backward. Knowing that positive charges repel each other, Rutherford concluded that atoms were made up of a small, dense, positively charged center, which repelled positively charged particles fired at it. He named the center of the atom the nucleus. 
Rutherford hypothesized that the positively charged particles were concentrated in the nucleus of the atom, and negatively charged electrons were scattered around the space outside the nucleus.